continuation of what we discussed previously about the creation of Adam and Eve. And uh, as we all know, Adam and Eve were uh, first male and female to be created. And um, they had a special, unique relationship, as we, we studied last week or the weeks before. God said uh, Adam was, was very, very lonely. And God says, it is not good for man to be alone or for women to be alone for that matter. Let us create a uh, helpmate uh, opposite him. To uh, And so it was God created Eve uh, from the rib of, of Adam. And uh, ever since then, we've had male and female. We've had the man and woman that uh, continue to live on many, many years. But today we're going to look back at creation and see what is this healthy relationship between the Adam and Chava, between the man and woman, between husbands and wives. So if we look carefully at the wording the Torah uses when it speaks about creating the man and woman, the Torah says, let us make Ezer Kenegdo, a helpmate across him. Now, literally, it means Eze Kinegdo means a helpmate opposite him, against him. So we wonder what's the logic of that. And the Talmud deals with that because it's a, it's a strange language. A helpmate across him, a helpmate against him. It's Eze Kinegdo. We all know that a husband and wife are supposed to help each other. But what does it mean when it says a helpmate against them? So the Talmud asks that question and says it seems to be a contradiction. And we're going to talk a little bit to that today. There's a famous story about a, a great uh, rabbi who was a fundraiser for the yeshiva in Israel. And he once came to a Jewish home and he was speaking to the man. And he, he proposed, he made a proposal. He has asked him for a certain donation. And the fellow says, Rabbi, he says, Rabbi, you know, I would love to give you the donation. But, you know, I like this, these, these yeshivas, but my wife, I don't know. She's not interested in this kind of stuff. You know, she, she definitely won't, want, I, I can't give it to you because she, she won't allow me to give that kind of, those kind of, that kind of charity. So the rabbi says, ah, now I understand the piece of the Torah. What, which piece of the Torah? Torah says, let us make a helpmate against him. If she's a helpmate, how, how could she be against him? If she's against him, she's not a helpmate. So he says, now I understand. What you do is you, you use your wife, you use your spouse as a help against you. You say, rabbi, I'd love to give you, but my wife, she's the bad one. <laughs> so. So that's how she becomes a help by putting her against, by pitting her against you. You, you become the nice guy. You say, it's, oh, it's, my, it's, it's my spouse's fault. So that's Ezer Kenegde, a help against, against you. Right? So that's, uh, that's what the, that rabbi explained. But the Talmud talks about it. And the Talmud says that Zoha, if you merit, your spouse will be a helpmate. Loizacha, if you don't merit connect, then they become again. So it, you have to be meritorious for a, a, a relationship to work out. You need to be meritorious. And so the Azer, the, the, the helpmate, if you're lucky, the husband or the wife, they're helpmates. But if you're not so lucky, then they become connect they they become uh, a, you know they become fighters against each other okay so this is how how it goes a is a connect a help mate against if you're lucky help mate if if not you become but if you look at the literal meaning the torah does say a help mate against you Right. So how, how is that possible? So really what I want, what I'd like to uh, suggest here is that 
that sometimes there is a way that a spouse spouses by pitting themselves against each other can actually um, bring out the best of each other. You know, we always think that if, if someone disagrees with us, if a spouse disagrees with us, that means, oh, that means it's a bad marriage. But it's not necessarily the case. This is what God, God says at the very beginning to Adam and Eve. He says, a good relationship is one that's an honest relationship. And an honest relationship is not always where you are Yes, people. Now, sometimes you need to give and take. There has to be a give and take in marriage. So a helpmate doesn't mean a helpmate doesn't mean a a, a, a person that just you know uh, gives into everything. That's not that's not what help is. Help is when the other person can can bring out the best of you. By being a soundboard, or by being a, a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a challenge, that you know you can't get away with everything, and there's a give and take. Now, first of all, I'll just tell you in general that one of the most important things in life is compromise. And what compromise means is it doesn't mean that, that you blow over the other side. It doesn't mean that you that whatever whatever you say goes and the other person has to agree to it. That's not a compromise. People speak about compromise. Compromise means that that you know you understand something deeply and you hear two sides and then you you reach by choice a compromise not not because you're you're forced into a compromise but because you see the wisdom of it you understand that this is a good way to go and in marriage also we find that this is one of the deepest concepts of the Torah is in this one verse here where the Torah says let us make a helpmate. Not just near you, but against you. A give and take. That you reach, you reach compromises in, in life. We know that, that the Hebrew word for man and woman is, 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 is almost like it is in, in the English. In the English, the word is man. And then there's woman. It's almost the same. So what's the difference between a man and a woman is the womb. <laughs> the womb, maybe the womb. <laughs> so what's the difference between these two words, man and woman, is the W-O. Right. That's a difference. And in, in the, in the uh, whatever, whatever language was the original language, woman means from man. Because the woman was taken from the man, from the, as the, the biblical episode. It, it's the, it's the, she was taken from the rib of man, so that's why it's woman. But in Hebrew, it's much deeper. In Hebrew, the word for man is, is ish, and a woman is isha. So also, like, like man and woman, it's almost the same word. What's the difference between ish and isha? So if you give a look carefully in the, in the Hebrew etymological makeup of these words, look at it, look at the words. Ish, isha. So the ha at the end, obviously, is, is different. That's the letter hey, and isha is not a hey at the end, isha. But if you look also at the spelling, you will find that there also is a yud, ish. And isha, the man has the ayud in it, and the woman just aleph shin. So what do they have in common? They have in common fire, ish. That's what the man and woman have in common. They both, they both have the two letters of Aleph and Shin. Fire, passion. You know, marriage has to be passionate. They both have fire in them. But the, the, the word, the letters, which is, which is different, is that the man has a Yud in his name and the woman has a He in her name. So the, the two letters that differentiate the man and the woman is Yud and Hey. We all know that's the name of God. So here we have fire that they have in common. And then you have what they both bring to the table together is the presence of God. So we say like this. If you pull God out of a marriage, what's God? God is compromise. God is, is peace. God is coming together. God is, 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 is being humble. 
That's the godliness of marriage. So if you pull the godliness out of marriage, all you're left with is fire. Fire is a dangerous thing. It's not a good thing. It's destructive. So you pull God out of Isha and Isha, you take the youth out of the man and the hay out of the woman. What are we left with? Aish, fire, destruction. But if you infuse the two of them with God, both the man and the woman, what do we get? We get uh, a, a, a beautiful relationship. We get a healthy relationship. So what I want to propose over here, what is the youth and the hay? The youth and the hay, that's God's name. And God's name is the is, is about humility. It's about both sides reaching a, an agreement and a compromise. And that's what God is. God, God is the recognition that there is something greater than the two of us. There's a common cause that we have. And once you have that common cause, which is God, then our, our differences sort of dissipate. So now it's not a fire, it's the fire of God. It's a godly fire, which is a peaceful one, which is which is a, a, a shalom, a shalom bias. That's what you have. And when you come into a home, a Jewish home, or any home, there always has to be ish and isha, which is the passion of God, a godly passion. What's a godly passion? Is one that's it's a fire that's tempered. It's not about me. It's not about my ego. It's about humility. And it's that, that's a fire of God. You know what they used to say? The word ego stands for? Ego stands for to E-G-O, which is edge God out. To push God out. That's what ego is. So egotistical marriage is Ish and Isha without the youth and the hay, which is just fire, destructive. When you when you have ego and you edge God out, then you have no humility left, and you can't get along, and you can't reach compromise, and you can't reach the shalom bias that we try to achieve in a Jewish home. So this is what I'm, I'm suggesting over here, that what's important is that Ezer Kenegdo, that we have a helpmate against us, not against us, but is that we, we recognize that there are differences. We don't uh, overlook the differences. We don't say, oh, you know, you have to do exactly the way I say, my way or the highway. We don't believe in that. We believe that there needs to be the ways of God is, is ways of, of kindness and peace and humility. So there is there is helpfulness in the kinegdo, in the in the crisis, in the oppositeness. Right. So the oppositeness is comes together. You know, you know the story of the rabbi that he was he was counseling, uh, you know, husband and wife, and the husband comes and says his side of the story. And, and the rabbi listens carefully, carefully, and he, he says to the husband, you're 100% right. And then afterwards, a few minutes later, the wife comes in, and she comes and sits down with the rabbi. And she tells him a, a totally a different story, opposite story. Nothing resembling the husband's uh, uh, you know, approach. It's his version of the facts. The wife says, a oh, completely different mice. And... Uh, the rabbi says to the wife, ah, you are a hundred percent right. And she walks out. Both of them felt very good. And they're both right. So the Rabbitson, who's listening to the rabbi in the room, side of the room, and she hears this whole thing, she says, Rabbi, I have to ask you a question. How could you how could the husband come in and say his story? You say he's right. And the wife comes in, then she's right. How is it possible they both should be right? They're saying the opposite. So the rabbi thinks for a moment and says to the rabbi, you know, you're also 100% right. <laughs> so, so sometimes you need a little wisdom to make everybody feel good. But that's the wisdom of Hashem. We're, we're, it's Ezek and But I, I want to suggest even something even deeper than that, even more than just compromise 
and 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 in you know helping each other through your challenges and through your differences. But Isaac and Egg, they actually, I believe that if when a spouse challenges their out of love, their spouse and 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 eggs them on to, to become better and to improve themselves. Of course, it has to be done very skillfully and very smart, and very, uh, you know, very uh, carefully and to walk on the eggshells. But a spouse that, 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 that takes their, 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 talks to their spouse and, and, and gives them good, solid advice of how to improve themselves and become better through affirmative words, positive words, can sometimes bring out the best, can be the best helpmate. So usually we think a helpmate against them is not good, but no, it's not true. Uh, both spouses just you know, let each other just float in their life and do whatever they want. Maybe that's not such a good thing. Maybe that's not what God intended. God intended that a spouse should be with each other and each one should try to bring the best out of each other. Like sometimes a spouse might see that, 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 that they have, that their spouse has a, uh, their loved one has, has a beautiful talent, which they never, uh, they never develop. And they're neglecting to develop a beautiful talent. They, they have a musical talent. They never, they never go study music. So it's up to a spouse, a good spouse, to say, hey, you know, you have this talent. Why don't you, why don't you develop it and go out there? You know, you're a good, you're a, you have a, a talent in, in art. Why don't you go to some art lessons? And the husband says, ah, art, smart, I'm not interested in stuff. The wife said, wife pushes him on and says, no, no, no. It's good, you're good at art. Go for some art lessons. So she's a little bit of a nudnik. She's nudging him a little bit in that case, right? But it, it, it's a nudnik, a good nudnik. It's not just a, you know, it's, it's she's, she is against him. She's fighting him to bring out the best. So when it comes out of love, it's like, it's like your children, the same thing also. It's like, if you just say, uh, you know, I love you, whatever you are. I love you, you know, anyway, whatever you do. A lot of, I hear a lot of parents saying that to their kids. You know, my dear, whatever you are, it's fine, I'm good. Uh, is that really a loving parent? I don't know. You know, some will say that's a real loving parent. They accept the child tolerance and they accept them for whatever they are. I mean, but maybe a, a more loving parent is one that says, hey, you know, get off your whatever and get out there and do something with your life. Make a mensch out of yourself. You could do it. I love you. You can do I see you have what it takes. Try it again and again and again. You'll see it. Maybe the first few times it won't work, but eventually you'll get there. So which parent is the, is the more loving parent? The parent that says, I accept you for what you are or the one that challenges the child? And the same applies to a spouse. Which is the more loving spouse? The spouse that just says, you know, I accept you whatever you are or the one that loves that spouse so much and they want them to succeed and, you know, they say, you can do it. Go try it. And the spouse uses their words in a smart way and, and, and pushes them to, to do better in life. Then it's, 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 a, it's a much more powerful marriage. That, that's to me, as a connector. A helpmate against. A helpmate that challenges God forbid one that breaks the other one. We're not talking about that. We're not talking one who criticizes and say, says, uh, you're a loser, you're a dope, you're a nothing, you're, you can never do anything, you never get it right. That's a problem. And a spouse that does that is, is you know, that's, that's an abusive spouse. And a spouse that, that no, no, but, uh, sometimes a spouse can, 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 can bring out the best 
of each other. Spouses need to challenge each other and, and try to get them each one to, to be a little bit better in life and to do more in life. And, and, and that, that applies to you know, young people, it applies to older people too. You know, things change in life. You know, there are many, many different opportunities that come as people get older. As I say, you have to reinvent yourself. And there's no one greater than a spouse to try to teach us how to reinvent ourselves. To become better and greater and to, and to accomplish more and to be a better parent, a better spouse, a better... That's through the, the tutelage and the help of our, of our spouse. They can bring it out. It doesn't necessarily mean a spouse. It's a parent, a teacher, you know, a teacher, a mentor, you know, a sibling. It's an old relationship, but especially the Torah says, a help made against, against now we understand what it means. That if you merit, this will be a positive experience. If you don't merit, then, then it could be destructive. But yes, we've seen many times that, that, that spouses get on each other's cases and they, and they destroy each other. And, uh, that's not a good thing. But we've seen just as many cases. And as I say, like, like same with myself, with my wife, uh, Goldie, you know, many, many years ago, Goldie says you have a talent of writing, so why don't you write a book? So it was her encouragement that got me to write a book. Huh? I saw that she had a talent in, in in speaking. I saw by the Shabbos table she was very influential and very strong, you know, able to to really be articulate. I said, why don't you take the public speaking? She said, Nah, I can't speak. I'm not a speaker. I said, Try. She tried, and today she's one of the top speakers out there, right? But that comes through spouses meddling with each other in a positive way, obviously. But that comes with words of affirmation. Words of affirmation, you know, that's very important. That we don't, we don't say like, you know, in a negative way. We say it in a positive way. Come on, let's do it together. Let's learn. Let's let's go to uh, to uh, Dale Carnegie and go to a speaking. I'll go with you. Come on, we can do it together. You know, that's a way to do it. Or whatever, or, or whatever the case may be. So this is this is to me, is a connector. But again, it has to come through words of affirmation, words that we 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 build we build each other. You know, by the Shabbos table, every Friday night, a husband turns to his wife and he speaks about her great virtues. Eshet chayel mi yimtza. 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. He speaks to her compliments. He, he uh, speaks about how, how, how good she is. It's not just how good she is. It's about him telling her, you can do it. You have it. You have those abilities. 22 ways, 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, each one of them is something that you can experience. And I see you can do it. I see you have it within you. That's the Eish Chayel. Many times we have couples coming to us, and young couples, and we try to teach them that. That's, that's an important thing. And when they come to our house, we get the husband, to uh, to read to his wife, the Eishes Chayel. We tell him not just to read in Hebrew, but to read in English. You can read Eishes Chayel to your children too, you know. But it, what what is the Eishes Chayel? Eishes Chayel means that we believe in each other, and we become a helpmate that challenges the other one, and tries to bring out the best within each other. And when we do that, we now understand the Eze Kenegda, the, 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 the helpmate against us beautifully. It's Ish and Isha. Remember that. Ish and the Isha. When you infuse a marriage with God, what is God? God challenges us too. That's his relationship with us. 
You know, God, God says, I have 613 mitzvahs I want you to do. Is that an easy relationship? I don't know. It's a challenging one. But each one of these mitzvahs are to bring out the best of us. And he challenges us. And that way he helps us. So placidity is not the way to make a better relationship. Tolerance and acceptance is very good. It's very important. It's just the first step. We need to, to, to nurture a relationship. Nurturing a relationship means to try to help each other within the context of the relationship, to better ourselves. And as we get older in life, to reinvent ourselves, like we said before, which is very important. To, uh, because every year you become a different person. And if a spouse is satisfied with who you were last year, the year before, the year before, say, it's not, that's, that's not helpful. Now, now you're not a young rabbi, you're an old rabbi. So you have to do a different thing. Okay? As an old rabbi, you have there's new, there's new, new challenges, there's new things to do. And the best person to help you is, 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 a, is a spouse or a mentor. The Azer connect the, the help, the helpmate across us. That's zach, zach. If you're, mer you're meritorious, anyways, that's my thought for the day, and uh, that's the part of, of creation that I want to speak about, about how relationships need to be not some some not always smooth waters, but sometimes a few ripples, a few waves in the in the in the relationship can make for better people and stronger people, and 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 to grow together. And through growing together, I'm sure we merit the coming in the shift of Kainu, the whole world will be better, the made will be made of Omen. Anyone have any questions? Uh, Shir, today? Is that where the expression comes from behind every successful man is a woman? <laughs> yeah, well, today they, they, today they changed it. And they said behind every successful woman is a man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rebbe. Shabbat shalom. Got, Shabbat got, shalom, got, everybody. Got, got, yeah, thank you, thank you. Any questions? Anyone else? I see someone has a question there. No? Nobody? Thank you. Well, if everybody's just accepting what I said. I wanted a challenge at least. Hello. <laughs> that was the point. Challenge each other. Otherwise, we're just uh, floating. The rabbi said, that's what it is. Huh? Huh? No question. Kishiba. Ah, Kishiba. Okay. Okay. Have a nice, a nice day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.